tale of the tape for this heavyweight championship fight. So a more than five year gap between these two fighters when it comes to the age, with some differences in height, but the same reach. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, a referee in charge of the octagon, Eve Loving. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the sold out Madison Square Garden Arena in New York City. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed USC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a kickboxer, making his professional debut here tonight. He stands six feet six inches tall, weighing in at 265 pounds. Fighting out of Nagoya, Japan, introducing the challenger, Bone Crusher. And now, introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of five wins, three losses. He stands six feet three inches tall, weighing in at 265 pounds, fighting out of Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending USC heavyweight champion of the world, Brock Lesnar! UFC belt on the line, guys. Protect yourself at all time, obey my command at all time. If you want to touch love, do it now, go back to your corner. They touch him up and we are underway. A lot of the UFC's best have gotten that opportunity. Absolutely, J.A. And when you grow up as a fighter, especially a heavyweight, it is your dream to headline double leg shot. Oh, man, the canvas is shaking as he slams him down. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Oh, reversal here, DC. What a way to switch the position. Fantastic movement by the bottom fighter. All right, he's got side control here, DC. You know, he's got a lot of different submissions in his arsenal once this fight gets to the ground. Well, these are some excellent ground and pound strikes here, DC. There's an efficiency with which he operates in these situations. He knows exactly when to throw, exactly when to hold, and it's allowing him to really control the grappling. Now he's masterful from here. Oh, he went to a single switch to a high crotch. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Keep it busy here off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. Ground and pound strike is true. Well, you gotta stay busy on the bottom. He's doing it here. Nice punch. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch. Now he sees the triangle. And this could be trouble here. Looks like it's pretty tight. He's trying to work his head out of harm's way. It, it might be over. Watch triangle, watch triangle. There he is. He's moving to the finishing position. Now watch, he goes parallel right next to his opponent. When it's time to finish, he has to... Oh, he might have got him with a choke. All right, side control now, DC. When you get side control in a fight, what are you looking for? When I get to the side control of the fight, and I believe this young man should do the same thing, it's secure first. Grab everything in tight. Make sure your elbows are in. Make sure you've got something locked in so your opponent doesn't just squirm away. Punch short punches, but try to make the opponent make a choice. Either he turns back into you, you take your front headlock, or he turns in the opposite direction, you throw your hook in, 
Then you start looking to get a choke off. Big, powerful punch lands. Now he gets back to range. Strong hook lands. Oh, massive right hand. Wow. He's gonna try to take him down. There you go. Oh, perfect entry to slam him down. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Past the two-minute mark in round one. Lands with the ground and pound. Nice hammer fist. Oh, and he escapes up to his feet. Very nice. And he landed the right hand there. Just out of the range with that right hand. All right, he closes the distance, gets the single follow tie. Big punch lands through the middle. Unable to connect with the right. Nice one, two there. Looks like he's trying to set up a takedown here. There's the attempt. He is all about that left kick to the body. Look at him whip his hip into that kick. Oh, collar tie. Well, not much set up behind it. The right hook misses. Real sneaky head kick gets in there. Both guys really throwing with authority. Very tricky when he throws that box. Nice job staying busy here on the double clinch. Double shot. Oh, slams him down with conviction, man. Twenty seconds left. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent, got to be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. for the end of round one. So there's the end of the round. A lot of high-level action. And if you like the takedown game, as my boy Daniel Cormier does, you enjoyed that round. It's like we're watching the NCAA wrestling tournament. It's takedown after takedown. He's fighting his fight. He's able to change levels, drive into his opponent, and secure takedown after takedown. All right, so we'll see how it goes here in this round. Previous round, it was all him just taking his opponent down, really every time he entered. Yeah, every time he got in on the leg, he was able to secure a finish. And that is the idea you want as a wrestler going into a fight. If you have to change up the technique, shot a double leg. Oh, how about the slam there? That one cannot feel good. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Got clip with the right hand. All right, close guard now. You gotta be careful, though. He's got a lot of submissions off his back. Oh, the ground and pound is there. Well, you gotta be working off of your back. He's certainly doing so here. Nice punch. Lands with the ground and pound here. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. Oh, nice work from the bottom. Tags him with the punch. Man, doesn't take a lot of these kicks to produce redness. Look at the left side of his body there. Nasty. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Really timing his shots nicely. Good tempo, very accurate, finding the range with relative ease. Yeah, he's doing a great job of really overwhelming his opponent with activity. That knee might have landed there. And those knees aren't just for effect. Those are doing real damage. Another nice knee there. Oh, he slams his 
his opponent to the canvas. I think the octagon was shaking. The octagon was shaking. Somebody secure the doors because they are going to blow the roof off of this place. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this. Right now, it looks like he may be trying to set up an arm triangle choke. He needs to secure the left arm, push it across, and secure it with his head. Squeeze that arm triangle. Watch triangle, watch triangle. Posturing up now, and he's out. Right hand on point. Beautiful movement, hip work on the ground here, just outstanding with the transition. He is not staying in one place on the ground, and that's very important. Man, how fun is this to watch as he continues to dole out damage with the ground and pound? Take it back to the days of guys like Mark Coleman just beating people up in the ground and pound. This guy is a throwback fighter. He's very fun to watch. Yeah, the godfather would be proud. Oh, nice job to reverse position on the ground. It was bad, but now it's not so bad. What a fantastic sweep. Oh, really nice work to keep busy off of his back as he lands some more offense here for Bob. The ground and pound has been there all night. Oh, that right hand is on point. Keeping busy here off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. Close guard. Oh, nice job here staying busy off of his back. Nice offense from the block. Lands the grounded pound strike here. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here, and he understands. Oh, good entry there to take the fight to the grappling realm. Now we'll see what he can do from here, champ. This is exactly where he wants to be. Look for him to try to use ground and pound to open up submission opportunities. Just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Outstanding ground and pound here. Somewhat of a lost art in MMA, at least in terms of making sure that every strike counts. Not an issue for him. He's making every single one of them count. He is not pity patting. He's not touching. Every punch that lands, he wants you to feel it. Oh, useful strike on the ground that was. 15 seconds remain in the round. Oh, and he hip tosses him to the mat. Now we'll see what he can do from here, DC. Right into side control. He's going to try to control him, then find a submission. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. All right, that's the end of the round as we show you some of the highlights over those five minutes. Really a clinic when it comes to the ground and pound. Yeah, man, this is what you're taught. When you're learning to become a ground and pound fighter, you want to do it exactly like he did. Gain posture, have height, control hands and wrists. Land strikes, don't throw too many, throw just enough control, throw again control. He did it perfect. All right, here we go with our next round, and thankfully for his opponent, it begins on the feet because his face was turning into mincemeat with that ground and pound in the previous round. Oh, he got demolished, man. It was punches, it was elbows, it was transitions into the elbows. I mean, he was so he had so much more knowledge in this area that all the way the opponent is a great ground fighter. Jiu-Jitsu goes out the window when you're getting punched. Double leg shot. Oh, massive slam! That'll change the complexion of this one. Well, anytime you are in a ground fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. Well, you gotta stay busy on the bottom. He's doing it here. Nice punch. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Oh, he postured up there, gained some valuable separation. And now, the ground and pound starts. A lot of top pressure being applied here. Look at the torso on the right side. Major bruising, and it's only getting worse. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Man, 
and this is some serious ground and pound. He's trying to put this dude's head like through the canvas. He's one of the better ground and pound fighters we have in the entire UFC, and you're seeing why. Good solid strike on the ground. All right, half guard now. Not a fighter you want in half guard against you for the bottom fighter. What does he need to do? He needs to secure his underhook. He's, oh, you got to watch him attack his submissions. He throws the legs up to try to get a triangle choke here. the open guard of his opponent. Got to be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. All right, side control now. We'll see if he can advance position. All right, good movement by him here on the ground. He really is a master of these transitions. He is a master of movement on the ground. You never know where he's going to be. Well, you got to be working off of your back. He's certainly doing so here. Nice punch. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. All right, half guard for him here and a lot of offensive options, I would think, at his disposal. Oh, he's got a ton of options. He has sufficient options, but I believe the safest option for him here is going to be to use his ground and pound. Build a base, posture up, throw big strikes, get back to position, build posture again, throw big strikes, and just really wear him down with a really secure position in half guard. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. Oh, nice work from the bottom. Tags him with the punch. All right, bottom fighter here. Maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Man, isn't it fun to watch this dude work on the mat? He's unbelievable how fluid he is in his motions on the mat. Side control now. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. He jumps on a headlock. We call this in wrestling just a headlock. And if you're not careful, you can get stuck in an arm triangle. Watch triangle, watch triangle. Himself into the half guard, like the control. Yep. Back to the stand up now. Both fighters upright. Oh, another strike lands to the liver here. He buckled him with that exact shot earlier in the fight, and he feels like he can still target that area to great effect. And he connects there with a punch. So pretty good striking display by a muscle. He throws everything so straight and so accurate. Good jab. But he's not up by much. Watch yourself, watch yourself. Now you gotta get back up. Scramble and get back up. 20 seconds to go. Well, he's more than content to work off of his back, DC, where he has been a magician in his UFC career. Well, really nice work to keep busy off of his back as he lands some more offense here for Bob. All right, working out of side control here. His opponent trying to control posture, but you gotta be careful here. Now he's on top of him looking for the finish. All right, so the takedown's the big storyline in that previous round. Let's look back at some of the highlights, DC, and got to be pretty discouraging to get grounded that many times in one round. Oh, it's so discouraging because all you want to do is let your offense go, but every time you're getting dragged to the floor constantly, you're starting to get fatigued. He's starting to wear on you. Let's see what type of effect it takes on his offensive approach as the next round starts. Wow, that could have been a 10-8 round for you. But we want to finish. So moving forward, we know this. All right, here we go. Fourth round of a possible you ready? five. You ready? And this is the time where fighters are really tested, right? Dig deep, lean on the heart. We'll see who has the other. You feel pretty good in round number five. Round number four is the one that really does test the fighter. It really does test the metal of the guy inside of the octagon. Oh, he landed another great shot. Oh, he's in a world of trouble now. 
They say the straight moves are the ones that get there first, and it got right to the target. Now on a quick entry. Great single entry. Rotates the high crunch, taking full life. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Oh, nicely done there as he escapes back to his feet. Throwing that jab, no good. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? Nice body to run in the open. Right hollow tag now. Throws the right hand there. Big double leg, double change. Oh, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. All right, feet on the hips here. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Oh, how about the speed on that reversal there? I mean, I know you can get out of some bad spots, but not with that type of speed. You cannot allow him to get leverage on the bottom. What a sweep. Back mount now. Well, you see all the grappling repetitions here. Just beautiful movement, seamless transitions on the game. Over and over, these guys are doing things that you see in every jiu-jitsu gym around the country. Well, you know, I don't like the gi very much, but I have an appreciation and a healthy one for these type of transitions. You can tell he's been in the gi at some point in his life the way that he moves so freely. I'm skipping jiu-jitsu next week, too. <laughs> Well, you've got to admire the urgency here. He is trying to keep the judges out of it. Lighten up his With opponent left and right. Went single into a high crotch. Oh, he's taking a neutral right. Oh, takes oh, a no right. Slams him on his back. What a takeout. How's that feel to be on the wrong end of that? Not me. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> I love watching this guy move on the ground. Another nice transition there. Such a high-level grappler. You don't see that very often. Watch a good ground and combine. Do you believe it? And that'll do it! He got it! <laughs> yeah, that right there is a high-level knockout, ladies and gentlemen. Crowd absolutely loving it. Just a perfect shot to end the fight. Landed flush. I'm not even sure his opponent saw it coming. So, a huge, huge win for that young fighter here tonight. Right, let's get you some replays now. Certainly a lot for our replay guys to work with in the truck. This was a clinic tonight in terms of mixed martial arts acumen in every realm of the game. And once he got to the top, he started to land brutal ground and pound until the fight was called off. Just a dominant performance from the top position. One final time to Bruce Buffer for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve LeBing has called a stop to this contest at two minutes, 44 seconds of round number four. Declaring the winner by knockout and still the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Well, he came in with the moniker of baddest man on the planet, and that is exactly the way he goes out. Congratulations to the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, your winner tonight by way of the KO. And that's a big man celebrating with his team right now. Enjoy it, boys. You maximize the moment tonight. The hood's still dangerous, goodness, gracious, move like the Gracie brother. You're paying me something.